Hello and um, welcome to this meeting. I'm sorry I cannot be with you in person uh, today, um, but we're very grateful that uh, and excited that STS and Anion is uh, meeting today, and of course hugely grateful for uh, UNASO to host the meeting, for the government of Ecuador to lend its support to act and to participate so uh, strongly. Um, for the partnership with you with the United Nations, for members and partners from Colombia and around the region to convene, and of course also for WWF, um, civil society and so many others to convene today to discuss uh, the challenges or the opportunities of localizing the sustainable development goals uh, in, in Ecuador and in the Andean region. This is an exciting opportunity um, and I wanted to just share a few thoughts uh, with you on how the work of the Global Sustainable Development Solutions Network might support you and how we will use the work that is coming out of this meeting um, for advancing the cause of the Sustainable Development Goals more broadly. The SDSN, as you know, was, uh, it was set up in 2012 at the request of uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. We're very pleased that our close collaboration and partnership with the United Nations is continuing under the new Secretary General Antonio Guterres who has uh, pledged a strong support to the mission and work of the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. We work on three sets of um, broad issues. Number one is we're working with members of our network. We're now close to 600 members uh, in the SDS and families. Uh, we're working on finding better answers to the technical questions of what do the SDGs mean and how can they be achieved. And this is something that we found extremely powerful. We found it extremely powerful to infuse knowledge and to apply knowledge to some of these technical challenges. Because all too often um, we start with the politics of achieving these goals of these transformations and we end with the politics and don't really discuss enough of what actually needs to happen. So we've done a lot of work, for example, on the energy uh, transformation. What does it mean to, to move towards zero net greenhouse gas emissions for energy systems. These are very tough challenges of engineering, of financing, of um, uh, business regulation, business challenges, and they're difficult challenges for every country in the world. Uh, many of the richest countries in the world struggle um, with this. And through our network, we were able to, to mobilize teams in, um, in dozens of countries to develop long-term pathways for achieving this energy transformation. And these pathways um, were taken up by policy. They inspired action in China, uh, in the United States. They inspired the commitments of the presidents of both countries to pledge bolder uh, and firmer action on climate change, which then, in and of its, and which then became a basis, a foundation for a successful uh, Paris Climate Conference. We're now launching a similar project focusing on land use change that will look at agriculture, biodiversity, water food production, um, forests, and, and the overall food systems, nutrition. As you know, these are very deep and interrelated challenges. Um, we face major issues of, um, uh, of, of obesity in, in the Andean region. Um, there is still a little bit of malnutrition. Um, agriculture is unsustainable. We're still deforesting. We're losing biodiversity. We're using too much water. And on top of that, we're also beginning to use agricultural crops for biofuels. So all of this is, is a very, very complex challenge and we're building a project that we're calling FABLE um, to, to work on these issues and calling on uh, interested countries to develop, to, to put forward and put together analytical teams of research institutions working on these issues, issues and we'll be delighted to have teams from the Andean region, from Ecuador, from Colombia, other countries join this effort that promises to be uh, a lot of work, but also very exciting, um, and we're the cutting edge of um, uh, providing answers to some of these most complex uh, policy challenges. There are many other uh, types of analytical um, projects that are fostering um, within uh, the, or growing within the SDSN, many of them initiated by members or individual networks and now taken up uh, more broadly. The second big priority for us is, of course, education. Um, education is critical for training the next generation of leaders, but also for equipping today's leaders with the skills and knowledge they need to make better sense and 
of the sustainable development challenges and to, um, and to work more effectively uh, towards achieving them. So to this end, we launched last year our SDG Academy, which is the first online university for the Sustainable Development Goals. We're offering um, over 12 courses now, um, covering the spectrum of the SDGs. Many are still being added, being created, that are available for free, that are also available for universities to consider whether they might be able to use them to complement their own teaching, to complement the teaching by local professors with um, the teaching by some of the world's leaders. Um, and so we are very keen to work with interested members of the Andean SDSN to explore how these tools, how the, how the promise of modern technologies can be used to improve education. And we're also working with many companies that are looking at using these kinds of tools to improve the training and to provide continuing education for their own colleagues and staff members. The third priority for the SDSN, of course, is to support the development of national and regional networks. And we were extremely pleased when SDSN Andean was created, again grateful for the local institutions, also for the government of Ecuador, uh, lending its uh, support uh, to this effort. The purpose of these networks is to mobilize universities, other knowledge institutions, working with civil society and business around the questions of first, what do the SDGs mean for our countries? Uh, how, can we, how can we operationalize them? How can we support um, a society-wide debate on what the priorities are and how, how they can be achieved? Second, education. And third, um, solutions initiatives. What are the practical solutions, new technologies, new business models that we can, um, that we can develop together um, and, um, and scale up in order to find more creative, less expensive, better ways of addressing key implementation challenges. And the SCSN is quickly becoming um, a, a powerful network to generate new ideas. Many of them are being, are being taken up. Um, and the power of this network rests in the fact that we have so many institutions involved that are looking um, at the country level, at the regional level, what are some of the biggest challenges, what are the assets, what are the, what are the tools that we can bring to bear to them. And, we ask you or we invite you to, to consider opportunities in your region and look very much forward to hearing um, what you come up with. But you of course coming together today um, in particular to discuss what the Sustainable Development Goals mean uh, for your region. Um, and to help you and others in this effort, the SDSN has put out last year uh, an SDG index that collects um, available information um, for um, countries uh, around the world. Um, it's a very simple tool. We basically look at what data is available for 80% of countries in the world and then aggregate it in two ways. One is we add it all up into an index and the point really is just to get an overall sense of how countries are doing and where there are differences within the region. Um, and it's always helpful to see if a country does better than another country on certain dimensions that often uh, generates and raises some of the most interesting questions, what we can learn, what we can do differently. And second, um, this tool presents the data in the form of a dashboard, uh, where you get a color rating for every goal um, to see how the country is doing um, on, on that particular goal. The purpose here is, of course, to help identify priorities, priorities for early action um, in each country. Noting that, of course, the SDGs define a very, very, very broad, a very vast agenda um, that um, we need to we need that, that we need to specify um, and make clearer. So I hope that this very simple tool will be helpful. There are many others available. Uh, the United Nations is helping governments pull together the data, and ultimately, of course, every government needs to use the data that is most appropriate uh, for itself for its own purposes. So um, this is a tool that's out there and we look forward to hearing from you what you come up with and how you, will, um, how you decide to, to use the same development goals uh, in the Andean region and the countries that make up this region. We will use this information as we gather in about a month's time at the end of May um, with Leadership Council um, in Berlin in, the, in preparation for the G20 summit that will be held in Hamburg this year to discuss and to chart the way forward for the global SDSN. So your timing is perfect. Please send us 
um, your conclusions, send us your recommendations and also um, task us, tell us what we should be doing additionally, better, um, what else we should be thinking about in order to support you as you try to make the sustainable development goals real and actionable in your countries. Let me wish you um, a wonderful, um, inspiring and a fun uh, meeting, lots of great exchanges and thank you again for coming together. Thanks to the hosts, thanks to the chairs of this network um, and goodbye to you all.